Right, so a bit of a different video today. It was a rainy day today, and rain doesn't mean that the phone's going to stop ringing. You can get snakes for all sorts of reasons. Marsh snakes, bandy bandies will come out in the rain, or snakes come in the house to get out of the rain. But most of the time on rainy days, we get these little guys. Turtles. Now, this little guy's been hit by a car. So we get a lot of turtles come in and we patch them up and send them back to the wild. And most of the time they are good to go home. This is an eastern long neck turtle. Now you can tell this is an eastern long neck by if we turn him over and look at his carapace here, see the shape of this scoop right here. Okay, so I Personally, I remember it as like an ice cream cone. If I hold him up this way, you can see there's the cone and the ice cream on top. But the more correct way of remembering it is the point from the bottom to this line here is shorter than the point from, from the bottom to this line here. If it's his cousin, the broadshell river turtle, the, top, uh, the bottom will be a bit more symmetrical to the top. Like if you just had the top pattern again and flipped it. So the bottom will finish more up the top and it will be shorter from the bottom to this line than it will be from this line to the bottom. So that's one way to tell. And another way is they'll have four claws, but say so will the broad shells, not five claws. Now, this guy's in pretty good shape. He's not too injured. He just has a crack here, and a little crack on this side, which you can almost not see. And underneath, so you can see there's some blood, and you can see the crack through here, and the crack through here. So we're gonna fix that up. A lot of the time they'll have some massive cracks or even holes in them, and we've been able to send them home. So this guy, I don't think we're gonna have any worries at all with sending him home. So I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so first things first is probably, well it is always good practice to use gloves when working on a wild animal, especially for injuries. But one, I don't have gloves, and two, it is kind of annoying <coughs> using uh, rubber gloves for this task because you need to use silicon. It's a bit of seaweed on him or something. What we'll do is scrape that off. Now what we're doing, you might think, oh, a little injury like that, why can't, you know, just put him back in the pond or whatever. But um, because his shell is cracked, if he, get, he can get little microbes and bacteria and all sorts of stuff in there, and it can cause infection and lead to his death. So, we need to get this cleaned up as much as possible. We're using fresh water to just clean this blood off. But just use water to dilute the blood and get that off. Okay. Now he only has these cracks here and here. He doesn't have any cracks on the bottom. It's just that top one. That's pretty clean. And what we need to do here is let that dry. And once this dries, we're going to patch that up with some silicon. So we'll put him back into the box a bit and let him dry up and we'll check, check on him a bit later and finish it off. So for the next day, we just let, let this guy sit overnight and let that dry up. Um, it looks, still looks clean. What you also want to check for is if it's still bleeding. So if it's still bleeding, it might have another problem and you're gonna to have to um, sometimes even make a little cast for him or something, but you'll probably see examples like that in some of the next videos because this guy isn't too injured which is good for him so we use Sally's all clear that's all you use come down and get a closer look if you want to what we're doing and this is why I don't really like using gloves because it sticks to the gloves we just want to first focus on the actual crack itself so squeeze a little bit out at a time we want to make sure that if he has a big gaping wound, sometimes you'll see them where they're really cracked open and you'll, you'll want to put some antiseptic cream and stuff in there. After you clean it, like last night, you, if it's actually gaping, you put some antiseptic cream in there and clean it up before you seal it up. If the actual shell is split and it's not aligned anymore, then you may need a peg or some sort of other clamping device to actually realign the shell. Because what's going to happen is, th this is just like bone, it's, it's going to fuse back together. Pretty sure it's made of keratin and just like our fingernails. 
And what, what's going to happen is the, the shell, where it's cracked, is going to actually grow back and fuse back together. And what the silicon's doing is just keeping out any infection, any bugs in that from getting in there until that can heal underneath this silicon. So if, if the shell splits, they're going to grow and it's not going to meet back up and it can still cause problems later. So if the shell is split, we want to pull that back together, clamp it, and then patch it up. But for this guy, because he's in pretty good condition, all we need to do is make sure... that we seal up this crack. Okay. As I said, first we just focus on the direct area where the crack is to make sure it's completely sealed. Um, it's a little bit sketchy in between this bit. You don't want to clog anything up with silicon. If it's cracked underneath here where, he's, uh, where his limbs are coming out or anywhere where his neck might be coming out, you're going to need to put a barrier, so a piece of cardboard or plastic or something in there so the silicon won't stick to his skin. But at the back end here, where his tail comes out, we're just going to be very delicate and patch up each crack at the back. So now that we've sealed the cracks, I'm just going to, over the back here, make that all one big piece of silicon, just to hold in what we've done. Sort of like an overcoat, we sealed up the cracks. Now we're just <clears throat> putting more on to hold everything in place and make it one big, one big piece rather than just a little piece of silicon here and a little piece of silicon here to be much stronger. Quite waterproof. That's not going to inhibit the shell growing back by any means. That's going to protect it from anything getting in there in the meantime. He's done. Now what we do is wait another day or so so that's completely dry and we'll be able to go down into the water and what we'll do is he's going to stay in here for the next night or so if he wants to he can access some water there and get a drink and dip his feet in we just don't want him to be submerged in any water so we're not going to put him into a tank where he can swim around or anything like that because we don't want to disrupt this until that's fully dry but once that is fully dry he'll be ready to go back out into the creek now so one lucky turtle we're just about to back him away he starts putting his feet out. See that? They've got four claws. One, two, three, four. Spot for a fifth. But due to evolution, this one's become reduced. So they only have four. They also have these cool little marks on their arms there. So it is a little bit dry now that I've got a feel of him. So I'd say he was out hunting around. So he, would, he came out in that rainy day yesterday. So he's loving it. He's missing a leg, is he? Oh no, that's just the way his legs touch him. Thought he was missing a leg for a sec there. So we let him down there, so he's not so dehydrated. So this is the little turtle. And as you can see, that's all dry. Ready to go. Pick off any daggy bits so it just doesn't end up as rubbish in there. But it's all sealed up. Do you want to let him go, mate? Yeah, just put it in the water. Yeah, just put him in the water. Yeah, yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah, just put him in there. What's that? What? Nope, oh, I don't know, some larvae or something. I don't know if he'll um, come out and go swimming. He might wait till we're gone, but... So he's starting to poke his little head out in here. There he is. Hey, buddy, you're free. Off you go, little mate. Oh, he's gone. 